Hello, my friends. I'm Rick, and this year's seat at the table. And little Missy, of course, is over here to my right, sitting in her little box. Uh, she's being quiet and behaving herself this morning. Yes. Did you go out to the living room? Yes, you did. I opened the door, and she went in and explored the bedroom and checked the bathroom out. And got nose to nose with Cece, and Cece's, Cece's a bit of a... She's having issues since uh, Mama came in. She feeling, uh, she's feeling that uh, middle child syndrome, I think. So, so little, uh, little Missy came back in the art room on her own, and uh, we put her in a box to keep her out of my hair. Right? Is that right? Yeah. All right, so we are looking at uh, wrapping up basically the last event for uh, Cycle 16, and this would be the... Uh, um, Fred Dodge had followed through on some uh, some tips and some observations and discovered that uh, the uh, local thug gang apparently has acquired some agrimex in some manner from some place, uh, considering you know just how how short the time has been that we have been sitting on this planet, uh, and there's only one agri concern anywhere in uh, the near you know the, on the planet that we know of. Uh, the agri, the agri guy, right? And uh, I need to go back and look at my notes because it, it, I gotta find out if 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 it was him or who it was. One of my platinums was being is being blackmailed or something by these thugs, and uh, if it's connected to that, and that's the ma and then this makes things a little more okay. So the, you you guys are blackmailing him and uh, what the, the payment was these machines that he could have used in his own concern to improve uh, uh, food production and you know what's really really going on here and if it's a different platinum then no well I guess that doesn't matter so uh, to initially I mean uh, if this progress to a shooting match which is a is a possibility then i would have to do a follow-up video because that would be a little bit different uh from uh, everything i've done to this point and uh if not uh, we'll proceed like it was the regular negotiation interrogation uh, in that in that venue i created a customs officer uh, terry cambia so she will be uh the senior customs officer for my spaceport on Fairwind and uh, to give her a little bit of teeth uh, the, we have created a, the Fairwind uh, Customs and Labor Ministries uh, Customs Enforcement Squad so I have a port security A or custom I guess it's, I like custom let's see port security oh, able squad but uh, let's see customs enforcement So technically, over time, this would grow into platoon-scale uh, units that uh, potentially could be available to a house in defense situ in situations for like defending the spaceport and that kind of thing. So in this case, it's just basically five five humans uh, with very little training, and uh, they're equipped with uh, ballistic pistols, uh, ballistic rifles, and combat knives, and rounds of uh, reloads for the, each one of those two weapons. Uh, and, and light body armor. That's right, because they, they, because uh, that's currently the best armor I have. And uh, yeah, down here, light body. Now, light body armor being uh, a tech one uh, item that's something I can produce uh, at will in my uh, or my manufacturing concern, uh, my factory A complex. The the uh, uh, personal body armor. Uh, is also scalable. So personal body armor uh, actually can go up in, in quality over levels so you can have higher tech versions of, of personal body armor and get quite elaborate as you get up higher in the technology levels. Uh, where we're talking just basic body armor in order for me to improve the defensive capabilities of my troops uh, and my agents who are wearing these things, I would need to uh, upgrade to medium body armor uh, or ideally combat armor. Uh, there's also assault combat, assault armor, uh, which is basically assault, you know, mechanized armored suits. So uh, in the case of uh, medium body armor, that is a tech two item. So it's one of those things that I have to research at, at some point and or either research the blueprints so I can manufacture my own or I find a source that I can pr 
uh, purchase enough medium body armor to support my needs for uh, you know uh, however long I need to support them uh, until eventually I do manufacture myself uh, and or uh, the uh, uh, acquire the blueprints themselves to manufacture these things so it's kind of an evolution so in order for me to get a combat body armor that is a tech 3 item I need to have a research tech 2 uh, medium body armor so anyway so these fellers and along with uh, Terry Terry's equipped with a pistol a knife and a uh, personal body armor in this case uh, actually I thought uh, yeah, let's, let's just let's give her light body armor because this is a potential potential situation here. Uh, and see where you're at. Uh, yeah. uh, no, light body armor. Okay, so she's once again uh, she's tried which gives her just a small modifier uh, she has no experience over time so every if, assuming she is, survives this event and we have for a future events where I'm used where I need to tap their services then she would gain experience for those events another possible scenario is that when uh, the dojo opening comes up for another agent for training she could be the one that gets plugged into that training next I don't know it depends on how often uh, how often and how frequently she's uh, needed. So we have a couple uh, challenges in this. One being is that the captain of this freight or this this uh, pirate pirate warship uh, is is going to actually be uh, equivalent of uh, any person I have in my house. So there there's uh, kind of an equal uh, playing field, but they also happen to have a tech to hauled. A warship which is a sloop and it has uh, for all intents and purposes it has a single uh, light grade uh, uh, ship grade weapon uh, but it carries uh, for in this scenario the, the the heavy grade weapon for the ship to ship combat would would not function at this range so the ship that would be defended by the gun mounts that it has and it comes with four so a basic class one hull can have two gun mounts and then for every hull increase size over that, you gain two additional. So if you have a Tech uh, 6 uh, hull, for example, you potentially have 12 gun mounts mounted on it. And then you have to determine where. <clears throat> so in this case, I determined that this, this uh, sloop is <clears throat> a lower hull and an upper hull. So there's two, the two sections are stacked on top of each other. Uh, this means each section is, a, is allowed to have two gun mounts. So placing them in the blueprint is important. So they can, e they can either be on the starboard or on the port. They can be on the, the bow or the, the stern. They can be uh, on the sail or the keel. So they, there's, there's many directions they can sit. And in this case, I picked for them to be, uh, because we have a stacked ship, uh, this case, uh, one, gun mount one is mounted in the bow and uh, gun mount two for this section uh, is mounted in uh, the keel. And so this would give the front gun mount a 200, uh, 270 degree arc of fire. It can't fire directly back at the ship itself, obviously, which precludes it from, uh, you know, getting certain angles it's not going to fire up and through the ship that's not going to happen but because it's in the end because it's in the nose it's not going to uh, fire straight under the ship so it's going to only have that front arc and slightly to the sides uh, which I, I determined the loading ramp or the passenger ramp for the ship the cargo bay uh, ramps are uh, in the uh, bow as well this make sense for the gun mount to then be potentially placed above them in order to give some uh, protection for these uh, vulnerable entry points for any kind of ship of, of, of any sort. Then uh, the second one for the lower section is in the keel and I decided it was midway, uh, midway down the, bail, uh, the belly of the ship which means it has a 360 degree arc of fire uh, minus where the landing pods are the mounts for the landing uh, gear are for the ship so it would be able to literally sweep my my landing field pretty pretty handily and the second thing I had to do was decided uh, what was in them so in uh, using my random charts that are available I went and I uh, created uh, or I went and rolled so the 
two gun mounts that are, are that are pertinent to this potential scenario is uh, gun mount number one in the uh, bow has uh, four Tech One rocket pods, and these are that's pretty potent uh, for the uh, that's pretty potent for uh, anti personnel uh, rounds. Uh, rockets are dumb weapons; they don't need they don't need a bunch of advanced technology to aim them and shoot them. You just aim them and shoot them it's just like shooting a, a pistol the only difference being is that they're a little less accurate than they're a lot less accurate than missiles and a little less accurate than, than ballistic uh, ballistic uh, weapons because uh, generally speaking you fire a ballistic weapon it's going into the direction that you fired it at whereas uh, a rocket potentially can go anywhere as soon as it leaves its, uh, its tube so in this case uh, I think each one of these potentially can fire uh, four rockets around so I could deliver it for a, uh, 16, 16 rockets per round until it runs out of ammo, which could take a minute. And that's a lot of dumbass, you know, concussion damage for the vicinity. Uh, it's going to put out uh, a odd pattern too. So uh, like missiles, rockets potentially can have, uh, uh, so you can miss your target and hit a secondary target with these things. Uh, there's the, the advantage to it. And the uh, keel uh, mounted gun mount is mounting four, or uh, no, two light machine guns. There's tech two items. Uh, think of, uh, you know, a saw or the old M60 or something like that. You got a pair of these things in a, in a blister mount and uh, so they can literally you know, pivot 360 and sweep the entire area around and underneath the sloop uh, and wherever targets may be. So this gives me a, gives them a challenge. And because based on the numbers, uh, I'm bringing a, a agent and a five person platoon, uh, I've also decided uh, to uh, back this all up with the actual militia platoon for the house. So that means I have, I have six squads or 30 men and uh, one uh, senior officer or the in this case the customs agent now uh, the squad has a squad leader and so there's four grunts and a squad leader to make it up the squad and a platoon then therefore is made up of five squads set up the same way so five squad leaders and and uh, 20 21 soldiers and are 20 soldiers and then one, there's one uh, Lieutenant who's in charge of the platoon uh, as the platoon commander, I believe so we end up with 25 people for a platoon although the mechanics allow you some quite a bit of leeway so I, I've had players decide that they would they were not going to count their officers as part of the as part of the you know the numbers and so in this case uh, That meant when they fielded a platoon that platoon actually was 30 31 people because you had twenty, you had five squads of five soldiers, with each one being led by a a squad leader, which gave them six people to that squad. Uh, that squad, and, and then the, of course the uh, platoon leader for the platoon as a whole. The uh, uh, downside for that sort of thing is it, it does mess with the mechanics a little bit. In part uh, for the ease, you have to do a lot. You have to be much more aware of your customization. So when you're going to combat, you need to know that this this is an augmented unit, and that way you don't take disadvantages for forgetting that. You can forget that it's not a standard unit, and then it gets wiped out sooner than it ought to, because there should be just just in body points alone. You know, every every body uh, body point is is. Uh, X amount of hit points for the unit, and that combined. So if the average the average human has 30 uh, personal scale hit points, which would translate to uh, six, uh, either five or six uh, mil or, uh, um, vehicle grade hit points, wouldn't take much for. That's what I'm saying. One, a couple, one or two rockets in your toast, uh, one good burst from a light machine gun in your toast. That's kind of the whole point. You know, you stand in front of a deuce, a, a, a ma deuce, you're not likely to see a whole lot of your body left to be identified. So uh, that's kind of the scale differences, let alone a ship scale. So if you're standing in front of a naval grade auto cannon when it fires, you don't even get to know you. You don't even know you died. You know, the concussion before you, it even hits you, or before the and concussion hits you, the you know you're already cr you're already croak. Uh, anyway, so. 
uh, I had to roll to determine. Of course, we're going to have the ship captain, which I don't have a name for him yet. So Captain Blank of the Blank Pirate Ship, because I haven't established a name for that either. And that I, that person, uh, based on the rolls using the house modifier, uh, is tried. It gives them a plus 10% or plus 10 uh, to the, anything they do. Uh, they also are armed with a single auto pistol, which is a Tech 2 version uh, of the uh, ballistic rifle or my uh, ballistic pistols the house like my house currently has uh, AR rifles that are being produced and we're talking about forgetting things so right there I should have had updated my unit to have a, uh, AR uh, automatic rifles instead of ballistic rifles which might have been a little better uh, in this case uh, I uh, the, decided uh, based off of uh, the, the the numbers uh, of the ships pas potential passengers and uh, crew uh, and what makes sense to me right off the bat there will be the pla the captain and then a ship's security squad so this is a squad made up of ship of ship personnel uh, they're untried and they're mount they, they have with shotguns and clubs and their main job is just basically to keep the local riffraff from and, and whatever from boarding the ship uh, willy-nilly and taking advantage of things so uh, in an actually up up stand up fight uh, they have some advantages in close quarters if though if they fall back into the ship's corridors then them shotguns really really make a difference uh, out on the open field uh, they have to be up close range uh, or point blank range close range to be really any kind of really effective as a weapon versus the long range capabilities of the rifles that uh, my customs people have that's kind of a detriment to them the downside is is we are uh, they are being offset by the fact that I have two gun mounts which by rights each gun mount would be the equivalent of two to three squads so if you figure two squads per gun mount there's there's four squads and then there's the ship crew squad so that's five squads and then the captain and uh, that gives me a slight advantage in uh, in, in uh, numbers of just one squad more than they have uh, in that perspective the downside is I have no weapons that can that can damage the damn ships uh, gun mounts from the outside the only way I could silence those things would be to bum rush the ship and take it by force by boarding it because uh, at the end of the day uh, machine guns protected by uh, sh uh, ship grade armor versus uh, light body armor and pistols uh, it's it's no contest now I'm just pointing the obvious out and so we're following up on this scenario and let's see let me get on down the road with this all right so I've got all these folks if we get into a shooting match I, I don't expect it would be very long uh, I, I would also have to expect that I would take some pretty heavy casualties from that perspective my 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 working uh, uh, ideal is that I'm going to have my customs officer try to enforce the house's custom uh, rules uh, and and get the captain to willingly uh, ideally willingly allow us to uh, search their ship and uh, knowing that they have this contraband a potential contraband on there that we're going to uh, confiscate at the end of the day and I'm going to make a note right at the beginning that I am not uh, seeking out uh, any uh, we're not seeking out uh, additional stuff from the pirate ship now if by dumb dumb luck if I get desperate situation and I choose to bum rush uh, this sloop uh, potentially the sloop has a potential crew of 30 on board and uh, with you know not, if you take the five that are outside so another 25 another five squads of people potentially are on board now some of those at least one squad will be mounting uh, man, uh, manning the gun mounts as we you know as uh, that works out uh, but at the uh, so the numbers wise uh, I would be almost equal to uh, just in just in bodies but the how the fact that the the pirates have those two gun mount uh, mounted weapons they're damn near impervious to anything I have right now uh, puts me at a huge huge disadvantage here so uh, I would be in effect uh, it's an all-or-nothing uh, uh, bum rush because in order to you need to 
get everybody inside uh, as fast as possible and they're going to be exposed to be three potentially four uh, rounds of incoming fire from them gun mounts which also gives time for the crew inside to mobilize and to get armed and uh, in position then you get inside and now you're you're engaging the ship from room to room deck to deck and uh, with all that that it entails including s internal security systems of ships which the rules the book has the rules for those things and uh, uh, static security systems and so uh, you could be dealing with that plus uh, happen to deal with locked bulkheads and doors and things hatches and other things like this uh, it can get pretty brutal and pretty uh, pretty uh, funky inside that kind of environment uh, the ideally uh, down the road I'm going to invest in purchasing and or in, uh, developing my own uh, so what I call it, infantry grade support weapons so we would have the potential firepower that my troops could then uh, use to take out a gun mount see there's some advantages because since we are so close to the ship itself uh, point blank or point blank range in uh, the uh, for the considered for the scale of the gun mounts this is important in a couple of ways because once again it's there's checks and balances so these gun mount weapons actually have ranges so uh, one of the reasons I chose rocket pods for example and light machine guns this was because they're actual point blank range weapons as well uh, they're, they just point and hose is how this kind of plays out and so uh, you get some negatives for being literally in each other's pocket but the range difference so a, a technically gun mounts are uh, vehicle scale weapon systems and that means they can reach out a uh, considerable distance the range is quite long and quite quite uh, actually longer range than personal scale weapons are allowed to, to have and so uh, the, the you need certain weapons that have to because some of these weapons have a minimum uh, range factor which means you can mount them obviously uh, anything that's under that uh, that makes them impervious so in this case uh, the, the light machine guns and the rocket pods do not have that so my troops can't use the ship itself for cover until they're inside the ship and then that becomes an issue about boarding and dealing with all the wonderful crap that goes with that and uh, I more likely than not if I can't uh, uh, enforce this uh, I'll have to you know watch the, the captain fly off with his goods because uh, I'm not willing to risk uh, uh, you know in my, almost my entire military <laughs> in one potentially bad scenario I mean it just seems like a bad idea to do so we are going to get uh, Yeah, that's okay. So I have a chat. Moore is the squad leader for Able Squad at Customs Enforcement. And so we go down here. And we go. Terry Cambia. Cambia. So let's see what she's got for modifiers on this crap. And negotiation. Interactions. Okay, so her standard of living is moderate quality, which is a negative five. So we have a ten. She starts out with a plus ten. Now she got a plus ten minus five equals five. Where's the, where's the list? All right. So, does she believe in the cause? She does. That's a plus two. Uh, she is not a personality. She, by de definition, is a flunky. So, uh, if you think of your your red shirts, your your everyday soldiers or or uh, government agents or house agents, the, these people are just people. They're just normal, low low rung. Situa uh, person uh, situation or positions. This is one of the reasons their standard of living would not be that high. Uh, so the next layer up, the, the lieutenants, if you will, would be by definition a flunky, which gives them a plus two modifier. Uh, a personality would be a, a, a much 
depends because uh, but we can make the argument that Fred Dodge is now a personality just because of the sheer amount of stuff he's been doing and uh, he's developing so it's just an extra plus three points for him in this case so she gets a plus two uh, she believes in the ca uh, the cause so that's a plus two that's another so that makes plus four uh, let's see the house character has a personal relationship with the, the NPC? No. house character has an intimate relationship with the NPC? No. The house character has freedom of action, i.e. is house character acting alone or without direct supervision? An agent in the field, for example, or a militia captain on a non-aligned world? So in this case, uh, Terry Cambia, Cambia has been tasked to lead the group that's going to go and enforce the customs. And so this makes her the on-site leader. Uh, she does not have the house does not have sophisticated enough uh, levels of, of technology yet for the uh, for let's say the next layer above her the house minister for example to be sitting in their office uh, overseeing directly uh, a, a a field mission but in this case so this in case she gets a, a, an additional plus two this means she's now plus six then we go and look, are they being compelled? No. Are they being rewarded or bribed? No. She has a vested interest in seeing the task or mission succeed? Yes. So now we're at plus eight. Uh, against established morals? No. Fanatical by other means? Technically, she's not fanatical. She's not established enough. For, uh, nobody in the house currently, except maybe the house lord and the minister of intelligence, would be definition, uh, by definition, would be uh, uh, fanatical. Uh, it's not to say that they can't become fanatical, it's just something that they grow into as a personality quirk and then we notice that uh, it seems like the roles are making Fred Dodge become more physically violent or something. That's, that's kind of how we would establish that. It's a matter of how you want to look at it. Uh, we also have, are they trained for the task? See skills. Well, in this case, she's not trained for any of this, no. Uh, so there's no modifier there. Is she supported? That she is. She's supported by uh, a squad able from the enforcement, uh, customs enforcement, and then they, and then in turn, both she and squad able are backed up by the house platoon uh, militia. So in this case, uh, she has uh, double support, but that doesn't count twice. So she only gets a plus two. It gives us now we're at plus ten for her support. Now, if she's cut off from that support during the event, so for example, if something happens to Terry during the event uh, and she's taken, she's incapacitated or, or killed or captured or whatever, uh, is no longer able to fulfill her leadership position, this puts a negative strain on the, the that group. So my, the house would then have a negative 10 to all of its actions until there was an appropriate uh, officer to replace them. Uh, which would not happen during the event. So, are we have the cutoff for support? No. NPC has a clear leader or officer present. This is true. Now, this is a plus two for the for the house. Now, uh, I've had people go, why, why is that? Well, if you have somebody who can make the critical decisions for your opposing force present, then you have an advantage. Then, if you're if you're dealing with their lackeys or their subordinates, who then have to go through a quote chain of command to get any kind of results that causes problems. So in this case, we gain an additional plus two. So now this brings us to uh, plus plus twelve, uh, plus twelve modifier. And each cycle, the needs consumable support goes unmet. Wasn't applying at this moment. Probably equipped for the environment mission. Uh, this does not apply here. This applied when I sent the damn Xeno scouts over to that swamp planet, and they end up dying the first round because I didn't send I didn't send them in with in a, in, improperly or equipped them for the mission at hand, and uh, they they paid for it, and they also had a big this big negative ten as well. So we have a plus fourteen modifier, uh, and I already had five left over from her base, so it just gives her a plus nineteen percent modifier to her roles and then we're going to see a uh, ship captain so you know what I'm just going to I'm just gonna eyeball a name so we're gonna sit here and we're gonna find a name at random right I just grab a book and go in here and say uh, uh, ramen noodle no can't, that can't be a name be silly and let's see. All right, here. I just a ship captain. We'll call him. Uh, where, where'd that go? Where'd that go? K. 
Kenzie Numion. This would be Numion Kenze. I guess it's Japanese. I mean, it could be Korean, but uh, I'm not going to look into the fine print on here to see which one. It's uh, enough references to Japan here next to my finger to make me say it. So, uh, all right, so there you go. That's how I came up. Sometimes that's just literally how you decide to come up with freaking names. And I'll just fire them off and, and do what we're going. So the ship cap, the good ship captain, starts out with a plus, a plus 12 for their slightly better ranking and then we go down through the list and reverse doing the same scenario except we're doing it for the house and so we know that their standard of living when i rolled it up uh, was a, a good standard of living which gives a plus zero modifier so that gives them a plus 12 percent and we go on to the next one i just where the hell did they go? I just had the damn things in my hand. There you are. You have all the damn things in the world and still not find anything because it's just misplaced. That's investigation, that's investigation. Set it down somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's right here in my freaking hand. I'm missing something. What am I missing? Alright, so she had uh, negative, I got plus 12. That's that. No. That's the investigation part. You know, this is just frustrating because I just had the damn thing and I was just looking at it. Because that's what I used on her to use to pick her stuff out for her. There you go. There's four and fauna chart there. We don't need that. And there's personal combat. Don't need that. Space combat. Quick NPC creation chart. Uh, need a space combat one, and uh, that's creating creating a personality, or NPC or personality. And this is controls. Creating uh, flora and fauna. Controls on the other side of it. Quick sheet for combat. Page two, movement, movement modifiers, NPC actions, NPC with chance. We want that one. Yeah, right there. Why the hell am I not seeing that? Right. So plus twelve. Technically, this is a this is the ship's captain. So they define by definition that makes them a personality. So now he's got a plus. He's got a plus seventeen. And since house characters does those we skip those freedom of action uh, in this case the captain has freedom of action so now we have an additional plus two so now we're at plus 19 are they being compelled yes they're going to be compelled because they're going to be put on the spot this gives them a negative 10 so plus 19 minus 10 gives them a plus 9 and are they cut off from support no they are supported so she's the captain supported by his own crew and the ship's gun mount. So that gives them a, a plus two. So now we're at plus 11. Uh, they have not lost leadership yet. NPC has a clear leader or officer present. Now this is a tricky one because I, a lot of people misunderstand it. So this means is we're dealing with a subordinate. If you're trying to negotiate a second side deal with somebody while their boss is present or you're trying to intimidate somebody, etc., this is how this plays. So that NPC is the captain. The captain is the leader, so there's no modifier here. If I was going to have the captain present, say looking at the other end of the bridge while my captive agent starts sweet talking uh, the guard at the gate at the door to let her 
to let her out, uh, that would mean that the uh, uh, she would gain an additional plus two uh, while negotiating with that. Even because the, their superiors nearby and the re and and reason they have to be a little more cautious of how they proceed which gives your agent just a slight modifier. So we end up with a plus 11% modifier. And to make things simpler at, at the end of the day, the best thing for me is I look at the, my uh, Terry has a plus 19 and Captain K uh, Kizai has a plus 11. So if we take the 11 away from the 19, this basically gives her a plus 8% modifier over the captain for you know, um, ex accepting any other event modifiers that occur. So this just gives us a working base to start with. So our agent is going to request access to the ship hold for customs duty check <gasps> plus eight percent does captain he's a uh, comply So you can get really, really, you can, you can, you can be clever and crafty in your questions and, and, and see how, and, and how you interpret the results, or you can get quick and dirty. I mean, you can resolve these things into very quick uh, events. Uh, do they want to fight me for it kind of thing? There's, then roll and see, see what happens. Then go from there. So does the captain uh, comply? And I have a plus 8% because of the difference between the two. And I roll 64. So 64 plus 8 is going to be 72 for that. 72 is a moderate yes. Since you're going to comply, I get a plus 15. This brings us to so now is a question. All right, I have currently a platoon sitting off off to the left somewhere, just slightly out of range. Or they, you would be close enough to be seen. And since I don't have, I have just basically an open ass field at this point. Uh, there's not a lot of places for them to hide. And then I have the customs agent herself the customs officer herself and uh, a five person uh, platoon or squad uh, security so if she's going to uh, are they going to cry uh, is she going to be allowed on the ship and we can even an additional 15 so we had a base of eight and we gain 15 from the pre the first roll, so we're going to go 8 and uh, 15 gives us a plus 23 percent. Still, it's high enough to get that most likely it's going to be a yes, and uh, but there's still a small slight chance that things can go south. So 75 and 23, so that's 88 or uh, 98. 98 is a definite yes. Now we got a plus 30%. That's like nice. And so, in the ship, and make squad with. And we got a plus 8. And we got now we got a plus 30. So, 38%. So 85 
85 and 38 well that exceeds 100 percent so we're back to that 100 percent plus So the captain's got no problem taking them on board. So that's that segment. And then we'll go and move to this next one. And uh, R Agra Agra Knights in hold. And I have the plus 38 still carrying me over. You know, I make it that simple, or I could just do a simple yes, no, or maybe roll, right? But I, these modifiers are here to help speed these damn things up. So and there's a, there's a, there's a, good, so, uh, there's a 20, and so now I'm at 58. 58 is a soft yes. That changes our modifiers to a plus four. Five and eight from above gives us a, so plus plus thirteen percent. Now I'm going to ask, ask: Are they concealed? So this plus thirteen, so forty-eight, thirty. So forty-eight, fifty-eight, sixty-one percent. 61 is also soft, yes. Right, so we know that they're on board. We see them now. We're going to ask our good captain, who's being cooperative to this point. Do you know they're stolen? I mean, I mean, I'm making the assumption. The house is making the assumption that obviously these street, these want to be street gang thug people show up with, with some pretty expensive technology that's uh, pretty, uh, for all intents and purposes, never been used, and then immediately uh, sell it off to a sh uh, to a passing ship. Uh, you, you have to question whether or not you know. Uh, obviously, they didn't have them themselves, so they had to find them somehow. All right, so we still have a plus 13 modifier and 18 plus plus 30, uh, so that's 23% uh, a soft no. Did not know they were stolen. Now, that's a soft no, so you can interpret that anyhow you want to do it. Uh, in this case, uh, soft no is a negative 5%. So, the captain could be hedging his bet and saying, well, no, I didn't, no, I did not see, no, they were stolen. All right. Excuse me. So, we have a negative 5 now, and uh, we carried over to yet another section of the event and so my base eight this time minus five so I have a base a plus three percent captain protest house confiscate confiscating the Agronites I mean, they paid some hard cash, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure they didn't pay anywhere near what the value of these things were. But they did pay some hard cash, or just give it, or they in exchange for something else that we're not sure of. Uh, but in this case, we still have a, so a negative uh, plus three percent modifier, and 75 plus a uh, three makes a 78 percent moderate yes. See now this is going to work to dis my disadvantage because I got a plus fifteen percent 
and you add that to uh, the 8% modifier because the 8% modifier we've already determined that's that applies to both captain and my uh, my customs uh, officer so in this case uh, the plus 8 plus 15 gives a plus 23 percent and to the follow-up question that goes with this one in my as best as I see it uh, captain uh, protest house confiscated the uh, the acronyms bar, yeah, excuse me, uh, excuse, let's see. So, does he demand his money? We have a plus 23, so that's going to work to my disadvantage because I want to know and not a yes. And the higher we go on the percentage chart, the higher the likelihood of getting a yes is going to be. So in this case, once again, we know that is a plus 23, and I have rolled a 63, so that brings us to 86. 86 is a solid yes. Twenty percent and the original eight. Now we're at twenty-eight percent modifier. Let's see. Will you take ten percent. Will you take ten percent of their value? So this once again flips around because now this works to my advantage. So we have the base eight, and then we have a twenty from the the, the previous uh, that's connected to this. So now we got a plus twenty eight, uh, twenty eight, and then we're going to roll. And I get a forty four. So twenty eight, sixty eight, seventy two, seventy two is a moderate yes. So by, by, by all rights, I don't need to pursue anything further here. I've a, 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 my agent has, a, has managed to pull off what I wanted her to do was to get their hands on them damn, those damn agronites because now I've confiscated them and I've agreed to give 10% uh, of the value to the ship captain uh, for their trouble for having dealt with the uh, local thugs. So by rights, this concludes this event. Uh, if I wanted to ask additional questions that are, uh, I don't know, of investigative matters, I would then start, excuse me, an investigation event, which would use a slightly different, a slightly different chart, slightly different results and modifiers. Uh, but more importantly, if it was just, it's literally back to back. So then my agent here would be at a slight disadvantage because we're going to have uh, start out with these this mod this massive modifier we already have uh, from this quote ending uh, negotiation to open up the next one and so unless you're clever with your wording uh, and if you're really going out of your way to be clever with your wording then you might as well just uh, you know adjust things to however you want a, a, a little bit of that that dice roll uh, uh, diplomacy kind of thing is what you want. So in, in this scenario, uh, I could, like I said, I could choose to try to extend it, uh, but I also th see the value of having different different entities, different NPCs interacting in different events because everybody benefits it that way. So uh, one of those things, a couple of things uh, I would like to do for cycle 17, which this concludes cycle uh, 16 anyway. So we look at uh, cycle 17 and uh, wish list. And one of them would be to investigate pirate ship connections. See if I can't get somebody to find somebody on that ship to tell them who they are and who they're affiliated with and if they're independent. If independent, are they open for employment? 
I mean, that's that's that is a legitimate way of of, a, of building your fleet from the, at the beginning. Uh, you can, like I said, if I really wanted to push it, I could have bum rushed this sloop. Uh, potentially, the odds were not in my favor of doing it, and so uh, it most likely would have not succeeded. Now, there's at some point I will have enough firepower and and support equipment uh, to be able to do just this. Generally, though. Uh, as we go up, the house goes up in abilities and ranking. Uh, the, the modifiers are uh, altered, are altered uh, to take that into account. So once we get to the point where a house is uh, much more uh, robust in its military capabilities, etc., uh, so will so will our opponents. Our uh, opposing forces will be uh, on par with uh, the house. So there's advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you, so once again, you can bum rush the ship. You can, uh, if you're lucky, you can catch most of the ship's crew off of the ship in an ambush or something. I mean, I've seen players do it. Uh, the the other possible scenario, once again, which is the one I'm looking at, is approaching the ship captain and determining if they're an independent pirate or part of a group. Uh, it, that, that matters because uh, an independent uh, is more mercenary than... Uh, others might be. So that would be potentially more uh, open to offers of quote employment for the house uh, and or other uh, stuff. So one of those tactics I like to use as a, as a house lord is to take my ministry of intelligence and hire pirates and smugglers and so on and so forth because uh, it gives my intelligence ministry a, a wider range of options that doesn't depend on the house for its own you know, so uh, its own transport and stuff like that so it all kind of plays out at the end of the day it's something worth looking into and uh, or potentially I could hire this this, this ship uh, pirate this quote ship captain straight uh, uh, straight up hire him as a, as a house uh, warship uh, although pirates tend to pay, uh, make uh, really bad uh, naval uh, or really bad uh, uh, official people, I'm just there's just kind of goes with their territory, uh, and so there's that possibility, and uh, there's also the possibility of a letter of marquee if my house perhaps uh, started to have a beef with uh, a particular guild and or a neighboring uh, NPC house that I have yet to uh, nail down the location of uh, hiring uh, these privateers to go out and harass their shipping and prey on their crap uh, and to your benefit uh, is worth uh, uh, an avenue taking. Of course, there's for every time you do that, you put your house at risk that your opposing your opposing force is going to get da damaged or destroyed, uh, captured, surrendered, or killed, and uh, then they they do their due vigilance and discover you know, trace the breadcrumbs back to who hired the uh, the captain of uh, the pirates in the first place. Hmm. Anyway, so that's how that plays out. This is Rick. Till next time, hope you guys have yourself a great weekend.